Hello, everybody, and welcome to another session of SEO ZRAS webinar. And today we are going to talk about how to increase uh, traffic with internal linking. And our guest is Cyrus Shepard. He is a co-founder of Zippy. He also worked at Moss. And uh, welcome, Cyrus. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I'm happy to be here. And Cyrus is going to talk about how internal linking affects website rankings. So they, had, uh, they did a research covering almost 2,000 websites. And he will talk about which internal linking strategies work best based on their research. So Cyrus, uh, please, you can proceed with your presentation. I'm very curious about it. Excellent. Uh, well, I, I'm excited to be here. I'm going to share my screen now. Yeah, just in the meantime, I'll remind all our participants that they can uh, ask their questions at Slido. Uh, there will be a link posted to the chat in a short moment. So you can just join Slido, enter SEO's as event code and ask the questions. And uh, we'll ask the questions in the end also. Okay, just a second. I'm having a, a bit of technical difficulty. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to get this up in just a second here. No problem. Uh, this is my very first time presenting this uh, presentation. Oh, great. So we are looking uh, forward I, to I, it. And, and, I, and, I, I, and I can mention that Cyrus is actually in his morning time. So it's a little bit difficult to start. <laughs> For us, it's almost end of uh, work day. All right, we see it. So excellent. Please. And I'm almost there. Uh, yes, it's it's very early for me here. I usually get up around uh, two hours from now. Um, actually, actually, I think you stopped sharing it. Just uh, we 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 saw it just for a min minute and. I'm I'm going to get this. I have done presentations before. <laughs> It's all right. Okay. Yes, now we see. Great. Yep, it's working. Okay, thanks, everybody. As I said, this is my first time presenting this. We did a lot of research on a lot of websites, and uh, I love talking about um, internal links. And I, reason I reason I love internal links is because it's something that, as an SEO, you can control. So the title of this presentation uh, is called Internal Linking Superpowers. Uh, but really, uh, I wanted to give a special theme. So it's Internal Linking Superpowers, the Top Gun Maverick edition. Now, I don't know if you have Top Gun Maverick, if it's come out uh, in your part of the, the world yet. I think it probably has. I don't really even like the movie Top Gun Maverick. Uh, maybe Many people like Tom Cruise. I think he's okay. But I think the movie is kind of ridiculous. Uh, the acting isn't that good. It glorifies the American military, which I really don't like. So there's a lot of problems with this movie. But so why am I doing internal linking with Top Gun? Uh, that's a good question. And the reason is because of this guy, not the short guy. We don't know about him, uh, but the, the tall guy, Joseph Kaczynski, the director. Uh, he's very tall. He's like six foot five. Uh, he's done a lot of films. But the thing you need to know about Joseph Kaczynski is he's actually from my hometown, uh, Marshalltown, Iowa. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's 25,000 people. Uh, we we're not known for very many things. We have a made right sandwich shop. You can get very good pizza there. Uh, but if there's two things I want you to get out of this presentation today is that there is more with internal links that you could be doing and good things come out of Marshalltown, Iowa. Uh, and it has nothing to do with Top Gun, <laughs> but I just had to put that in there because we needed a great theme for today's presentation. All right. So let's go get those internal links with the help of Tom Cruise. All right, so this is kind of an advanced talk. We're gonna be talking about some advanced SEO concepts. You don't need to know any uh, data science. Uh, you don't need to be a programmer, but we are gonna be talking about some, some fairly complicated things. So if you aren't an SEO, if you don't do a lot of SEO as your main job, or you haven't been doing it very long, some of these concepts may come off a little hard. So I wanna begin by making sure we're on the same page with a very basic concept. What do I mean when I'm talking about an internal link? 
so an internal link head, it's very basic, is when you link from your own website to another page on the same website. So you're linking to yourself. And there's three elements that are a requirement for an internal link. Uh, first, you need an href element. And this is important. We're going to talk about why you need this later. Uh, second, you're again, you're linking to yourself. You're linking to your own website. And third is the anchor text, uh, the text that appears when you link, uh, click here, my website, something like that. The anchor text can be empty in which it's called an empty anchor text. But these are the three elements where we're going to be talking about these and, and why they are important later. And it goes beyond the obvious. And then we have the internal image link. An image link is basically when you use an image to link to another page on your own website. And the important thing here is that the alt element, uh, the alt text, it becomes your anchor text. And again, later in the speech, later in the presentation, this is going to become a little bit more important because there are some ways you can optimize this uh, that aren't really being talked about. Okay, so we know if you do any sort of SEO, you already know internal links are important. It, it's really obvious. Uh, we know that it's an official Google ranking factor, that internal links pass page rank, they pass anchor text signals, they help search engines crawl your site, and they can help improve your engagement signals. Uh, when you have internal links, people can click, uh, it can lower your bounce rate as they visit more pages on your site, it can increase the number of uh, pages per visit, your time on site, all those things. So most people focus though on external links. You build a website and you're trying to get links from other websites. And this is great because those are also a ranking signal and most people consider them a stronger ranking signal. But one of the great reasons that I love internal links is because people aren't using them enough, but also you can control them. Now, if you've ever done any kind of SEO, you know how painful it can be to try to get external links. Writing an email, asking someone to get you a, get you a link and you have very little success. It's like, it's like asking someone out and they just don't want to date you. Uh, will you link to me? And the success rate for external link request is somewhere between zero and 30%. I've written hundreds or thousands of these emails doing every type of you know template. I've worked with link building agencies. You don't really have a lot of success with external link requests. But the great thing with internal link requests is you, your success rate is always 100%. You get 100% of the links you ask for. It's very easy. It's something you can control. And you can end up with, and you have control over those links with the anchor text and everything else. So it's a very controllable environment. And I think it's perfect that Tom Cruise loves himself in this slide because it's the perfect encapsulation of Tom Cruise movies. Okay, another thing we already know about internal links are that they move the needle. If you just do a Google search for internal link case study, you see this time and time again, screenshots, traffic going up and to the right. We implemented internal links uh, and we saw a 250 increase uh, percent in traffic. We know this, it, people share these things all the time. We improved our internal linking and we saw an increase in traffic. But there are unexpected benefits of internal linking. Now, typically, uh, when we add internal links, we expect the page we're linking to, to increase in traffic. If I have my home page and it's doing really well, and I link to a new page that I launched on, you know, uh, my new e-commerce store, I would expect th those pages to rank higher. But there are some unexpected benefits that happen when we add those links that, that aren't obvious. So I want to uh, highlight this study from SearchPilot, which is an A-B SEO testing platform. And they did a study uh, where they added internal links to all their e-commerce pages. And you can see on the left, that's what the page looked like beforehand. And on the right, uh, what it looked like after they added the links. And then very simple, just some categories, uh, frozen luxury fish and seafood, frozen pond, and they added these to every page. So as you can expect, after they added these, these links, pages that they were linking to increased 20%. So this is not surprising. This is what we would expect. The unexpected result is what happened to the pages where the links were on. To be clear, these pages were in the blue, the source pages. Uh, so not only did the target pages increase 20%, the source pages increased 20% as well. And this is something that we saw at Moz all the time. 
uh, in our experimentations. That when we added internal links, not only did the page that we were linking to increase in traffic, but the page that we are linking from also increased in traffic. Not only that, but the page we are linking from often had better engagement metrics. Because when you add the links, people click on the links, which lowers bounce rate, increases time on site, and increases the number of pages per visit on those pages. So it, it helps your site all around in many unexpected ways. So I know what you're saying. I can feel you in the audience right now when you're saying, hey, Cyrus, this is all great. Uh, but I've been doing SEO a long time. I know about internal linking. This is very basic stuff. I'm very disappointed in this webinar because I already optimize my internal links. I am already doing internal linking. And I'm here to tell you today, no, you aren't. You are not optimizing your internal links the best that you can do. And I know this because we have the data to prove it. So there is a study from InLinks. Uh, InLinks is a popular internal linking software where they did a study where they looked for internal linking opportunities, uh, looking for pages that were related to one another uh, that weren't already linking. Uh, and they did this on 5,000 websites. And what they found was that 82% of links opportunities are missed. Uh, now you can argue with the methodology, it's somewhat subjective, but we kind of found the same thing at Zippy with our study. Uh, we recently looked at something like 23 million internal links across 1,800 websites, half a million URLs, and we compared that to data via Search Console. Uh, so we actually knew the clicks, we had Search Console access to these sites, so we actually knew the clicks associated with each URL and it allowed us to study these URLs in much more detail than most studies can. Uh, and that's the URL if you're, you're interested in looking at it. So this is what we found in our own study, that most pages, most pages on most websites have very few internal links. Uh, it starts, most pages have at least one, which is great. Uh, so they can be crawled, so they have a chance of ranking. But after that, it starts to go down pretty significantly. In fact, in our data set, 53% of URLs had three or fewer internal links. And this is simply not enough. And that's the vast majority of websites out there. Most of the pages on the internet have very, very few internal links. And it sort of supports the in-link study that people are missing 83% of their internal linking opportunities. In fact, only 24% had more than 10 internal links. And this includes navigational links. Uh, which link to every page on your site. So the majority of pages simply are not getting enough internal links. So how many links are enough? We're gonna answer that question in just a minute. Like Tom Cruise, you're wondering, wait a minute, if I need more than three, how many internal links do I actually need? So this is a complicated question and I'll explain why in just a second. So this, is, this graph shows internal links versus Google search clicks. So how many links, internal links does a page have? And what we wanted to do, which, I, which very few studies have ever done before, is compare that to how much traffic those, in, those pages receive. And we can see that when on the left-hand side of the screen, as you start out from zero to four internal links, five to nine, 10 to four, those pages get some Google traffic, but it starts to increase as you add the number of internal links. In fact, it goes up until you get to about 40 or 45 internal links per page, and then it starts to decline a little bit. And this is kind of interesting. Why would it go up to about 40 or 45 and then start to decline? And we had to dig into the data a little bit to try to understand why that happened. But here's something more interesting. It's not the number of links that matter in our data set that we found. What we found was a much stronger relationship between anchor text variations and Google clicks. So remember earlier when I talked about anchor text and each different link, uh, can have a different anchor text. So what we found in our data set was it wasn't the number of links that mattered, it was the number of different types of links that mattered. So uh, examples of anchor text variations, because some of you may be a little confused by what I mean about anchor text variations at this point. So let's say we have this page, this is a great example. Let's say we have this page, uh, recipes, and we want to link to it in different ways. So across my website, I can link to it from many different pages using many different types of variations. Recipes, tasty dishes, top-rated recipes, 
click here, pinch of yum, our favorite dishes, read more. You get the, you get the idea. We can link to it in many different ways. And what we see from this graph is what we found in our data was the more different ways we link to it, generally the website, had, that page had more traffic. Now, as we rose, uh, once we got past about 25 variations, uh, the data got a little less reliable. That's because very few pages have that many variations. If you look at your own website and the number of different ways you link to your own pages, you'll generally find about three or four per page, but that's it. But pages that get higher variations tend to get the most traffic. And this was, this was very interesting. This also explained why these higher URLs got a little less traffic. Because when, once you get past about 50 or 60, these tend to be site-wide or navigation links. So these are links that you put in your navigation that link to uh, every page on your site links to these same pages. Does this make sense? So if I put a link in my navigation, it is, it is linking from every page of my site. That means it has one anchor text variation. And that's kind of a key point. So when you put a link in your navigation, you're making a choice because you get lots of links, but it is the same anchor text. And I realized this is sort of lost in a lot of people because a lot of people like to put their links in the navigation, but it limits how, much, how many anchor text variations you can have for that navigational link. And navigational links sometimes do fine, but that is a choice you make. In contrast, putting your anchor text in the text or the body means you have fewer, fewer links generally because you have to do those manually, but you have infinite anchor text, uh, anchor text variations and strategies and all different ways that you can link to your content. So it's often a choice that, that you can make. But here's a question. And here's a question that SEOs have been asking for many, many, many years. What happens when you link to your page in both the navigation and the text? And they both link to the same page because this might create a dilemma for Google. So here's a, here's a page on Moz uh, that was a dilemma. We have a page that we made, you know, uh, kind of a lot of money on, which was our SEO tools. So what, and we link to it in the navigation from every page of the site. But then if we write a post like I did here about our SEO tools, they link to the same page. What link does Google use? Uh, do they use the anchor text from the navigation? Do they use the anchor text from the body? Do they use both? It is very hard to determine. Uh, so legacy, there used to be some old rules about this that as far as we know, still basically ap apply. The traditional view was that Google would use the first link and give it priority. Uh, and that means both links pass page rank, meaning they both give you know, power, uh, but only the first link passes the anchor text. So in this, in this example, if Google were still using this, only the top anchor text would be used, the free SEO tools. Uh, the bottom link, top end SEO tools, Google would look at that link and pass page rank through it, but they wouldn't consider the anchor text. So this only counts as one anchor text variation. The question is, is this still true in 2022? And the truth is, it's probably a little more flexible because Google can render the page and may not render the navigation on, on, on every page. They may look at anchor text in different ways, but if we're being honest, uh, most SEO professionals still consider the first link priority to be the law of the land. So it's something we have to take into account when we're creating our websites, because the important thing is the, is the anchor text variation. So this creates an important question. Should you have a large website navigation that only gives you one anchor text variation, or should you put all your links in the body of the page? And that's an important question. So Backlinko, if you do SEO, you're probably familiar with Backlinko, uh, just sold to SEMrush for a lot of money. Uh, half a million views, uh, half a million search visits per month. And that's why SEM SEMrush bought them. Backlinko, if you've ever tried to navigate his site, it's really hard because there's very few links in the navigation. Backlinko has chosen to go with body text. He doesn't want his links in the top. He wants his links in the blog post and body so he can control his anchor text, control his visitors. And that's a choice that he made and he's very successful with it, limiting his navigation. 
On the other end of the spectrum, you have the Home Depot, which is a huge e-commerce store here in the United States uh, and, other, and North America. And their navigation is on the other side of the spectrum. Literally every link that they can think of goes into their navigation. In our research, we found that for medium and large sites, uh, navigation links work pretty well. For smaller and medium sites, it might be better to go with a limited navigation and put your important links in, the, in your text body uh, so you can control the anchor text variation. But in the end, the important thing is, whatever choice you make, you should use navigation for navigation and not for SEO. Don't put your important links in the navigation hoping to increase their SEO value. Put your important links in the navigation if it will help your user. Because it might be, but if it's not, if it's not there for navigation, it might be better to put those links in the body of the text. So there are ways to get around this when you have first link priority, when you have two links on the page. Uh, so all those rules we just talked about, there are some ways to get around them and sort of uh, cheat the system a little bit. Now, the first way to get around getting, because our goal here, let me be clear, our goal is to get more anchor text to count because anchor text variations uh, seem to be what's important. So the first way that we can get more than one anchor text to count on a page is when the first link is an image. When the first link is an image, traditionally, that's why we have legacy on the screen, traditionally, Google will tech count both anchor text. So in this case, the alt text is goose for the image and the link below it is Anthony Edwards. In this instance, we get two anchor text variations, goose and Anthony Edwards at least the way that that's how, how it's worked in the past. Uh, and this is important because in our data set, missing links, anchor uh, images were the number one source of missing anchor text. People, people put an image on their page and they just don't bother to fill out the alt text. Maybe people have heard that alt text doesn't really help your page, but it helps with anchor text. And that's why you have to put in the alt text every single time. And in our data set, 4% of the image links that we found had absolutely no anchor text, which means you're missing out on an anchor text opportunity here. So that's why you always have to use the alt text uh, on your images. Not because of the alt text, but be when those pages are linking, you get an extra anchor text for those images. And there's another way uh, to avoid the first link priority. Let's say that you have two links going out to the page and you want them both to count, you want both anchor text to count. Uh, Another way to do it is the pages 301 redirect or canonical. And that means you're actually linking to two different URLs, but they go to the same page, either through a redirect or a canonical. In this instances, both anchor text would count again. So you're getting more anchor text variations. This is not a very practical solution. It's kind of hard to set up pages that are going to re 301 redirect or canonical, but it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. And perhaps the easiest way to get more anchor text variety is to simply use uh, the pound sign, the hash links. So example.com pound link. Uh, Google does, doesn't take anything into consideration in the URL after the, after the hash generally as a ranking signal. You'll often see these URLs show up in uh, search console, uh, but they're canonicalized to the main page. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a weird situation. But when you use these pound signs, these hash links, uh, they reference the same page. It's very easy to do, but in this instance, they count as they typically count as a second anchor text. And it's a very easy way to add anchor text variety uh, to your pages. And in fact, if you look at this page that I created for Moz, and I created this page solely for the purpose of this link on the bottom of the page, top end SEO tools, you'll see that the second link links to free SEO tools pound index. And that was done purposely. So Google would count the second anchor text. Uh, and every time on Moz, when I linked to this page, I would use a pound sign to get Google to count both anchor text because that anchor text is what you want. Uh, so my general advice for internal linking is to link high and often. So here's an, here's an experiment we did, and we did this on several pages. So you know those related links that you often see at the end of blog posts? Well, we had those at Moz, and what we decided to do was move those links to from the bottom of the page 
to the top of the page. So instead of waiting for the person to read all the page and get to the bottom and then click links, we put those links at the top uh, to see what would happen. And the result was very much like that search pilot study I shared earlier, not only did the target page increase in traffic, but this page actually increased in traffic as well. This page is like 12 years old, but it's still got more traffic because people were coming and clicking those links, uh, better user engagement, and it just worked better putting the related links at the top. My other advice for internal linking is try to link high on the page. The higher on the page, the more page rank it's gonna pass because of reasonable surfer and the more impact it's gonna have. Basically, the more likely that a user is going to actually click the link, the better it's gonna work. All right, so now I wanna talk about something that a lot of people don't talk about in SEO anymore. Uh, it's the top secret top gun area of white hat page rank sculpting. Now page rank sculpting, when I started SEO, everybody talked about page rank sculpting. And that is the idea that when you link out, every, every page has a certain amount of power or page rank that it can pass to other pages. And the more times you link to other pages, the more you dilute your page rank. So if you link to 100 pages, each, each page gets slightly less and less and less page rank as opposed to linking to three pages. So with page rank sculpting in the old days, uh, you would actually use a nofollow to block the page rank from going to one of those pages. And it worked really well, but then Google stopped that uh, back in 2011. And so today people say, oh, you can't page rank sculpt. No, that's not true. You just can't page rank sculpt using the nofollow attribute, but there are still ways to help increase the flow of page rank through the links you want them to. Uh, the most obvious one is reasonable surfer. And it's what I talked about in the earlier slide by placing links higher on the page. Links that are more likely to get clicked may pass more value. And that means placing your internal links higher up in the main body of the text and avoiding things like the navigation, the sidebar, the footer. The links you place in the main body are going to pass more value, more likely if they're more clicked. And this is a perfectly legitimate way to do page rank sculpting. Another way is link consolidation. So if you link to your about page or your contact page, you just want to reduce the number of links on your page and the remaining links will pass more value. So maybe you don't link to your about page from every page of your website. Maybe you only link to it from your homepage. If Google can find your about page, that's fine. Uh, of course, that's a weird user choice. You have to do it based on your own website, but simply reducing the amount of links on each page and internal links is a way of increasing page rank to your own internal links. And this counts for external links too. If you link to a lot of your competitors, link out, that means less page rank for you to use on your own website. Uh, and the, another third way, and this is kind of a controversial way, is that Google can only crawl crawlable links. So remember at the beginning, I talked about the a href element in your links. Uh, Google can only follow links when they have this a tag. So if you can create links that Google will not follow, and there are perfectly legitimate ways to do that using JavaScript, uh, or other techniques, you can link to your website, you can link, add internal links for your users, uh, but not for Google. And this is a way to pass more page rank to the links you want. For an example, affiliate links. Perfect, there's no reason not to use this on affiliate links when you're gonna use a nofollow anyway. You might, uh, on my own sites, I use uh, JavaScript links for affiliate links because I don't wanna pass the page rank to those affiliate sites. Now, there are some questions about usability. That's your own choice. You're gonna to have to make these decisions, but these are perfectly legitimate ways to do white hat page rank sculpting. So we're almost to the end here. I wanna go over a very few tools to audit your internal links. Uh, of course, there's Google Search Console, which will show you all your internal links. It's not a great tool, because it won't show you anchor text, but you can at least see the number of internal links that Google has found for each page. Uh, Screaming Frog, I wanted to choose Screaming Frog because a lot of people are familiar with it, but it is an excellent tool for auditing your internal links. You can use the bulk export, all anchor text, because it's the anchor text that you want to examine. And you can get a download that shows every anchor to every internal link on your site uh, in accordance with the URL, because that's, that's what you want. You want the anchor text, destination and source. And a lot of SEO tools don't provide all these things. So when you're doing internal links and you're looking for 
internal link opportunities. There are a few ba basic techniques. Most people do the exact match text search, something like that. There's some, you can do this in Screaming Frog where you just like, hey, my keyword is awesome keyword. I'm gonna look through all my entire website for awesome keyword, and then I'm gonna link. I don't think this is a great method. Why? Because it only gives you one anchor text variation. You're not looking for keywords, you're looking for relevance. So some SEO software does this, it's not great. A lot of people do this site search where I'm looking for internal link opportunities. I'm doing keywords at my site zippy. This is a lot better. This works much better than exact match because Google will find you internal pages. The problem with this is it finds pages that are already linking. Uh, it will turn up category pages, things like that. So it's, a, it's good, but there are better solutions. And this is one of the few areas where I actually think automation tools work a little better. And there's some free trials and some free options out there. I'm not trying to get you to pay anything, but I think automation has solved this better uh, than what we can do manually. One is InLinks. I highly encourage you to try it. It's great software. Uh, Twilo is, I, I'm not sure I'm saying that right. It's also great software specifically to find internal linking opportunities. There's a free trial available. Uh, Link Whisper, this is for WordPress specifically. Amazing software. Helps you find internal in, uh, internal link opportunities as you type. And finally, my software, which we built ourselves, which is Zippy. Uh, we also have a free trial available. That's the only self-promotion I'm gonna talk about in this whole talk, but I think it's the best internal linking tool we have out there and, and you can also try it. Uh, and I'm gonna speed through these last two slides because we're out of time. Uh, keywords in your anchor text count. In our study, pages that had at least one exact match anchor, meaning your money keywords, using those keywords, those pages ranked so much higher and got so much more traffic than pages that did not have at least one exact match anchor. The, and keep in mind, the most important thing is your anchor text variation is more important than anything else you can do. Uh, you wanna consider all the different variations. You wanna use non non keywords, but the most important thing is to get as many variations and as many keywords as you can in all those different anchors. Google recommends against using URL anchors like example.com. Uh, in our data set though, those pages actually did better than pages that didn't have those anchors. So if you want to link with example.com, go ahead. It's another anchor text variation that can help under-optimize uh, your page. So Coming to a close here, I sped through a lot of these things. Uh, we are gonna have the recording available if you need to watch it later and feel free to ask me any questions, but your basic rules for internal linking, you wanna link from many different pages. You wanna vary your anchor text every time. You wanna make sure all your images have alt tags so you get the extra anchor text. You wanna use all your top keywords, all your top keywords, but not too many. Your number one thing for placing links is link for engagement. Link in places people are actually gonna click, not at the bottom of the page, at the top. So you're linking from the body. And if you have more than one link to the same page, uh, you wanna avoid the first link priority rules, which we talked about earlier in the presentation. And that's how we do internal linking. And I hope you got something out of this and I hope you got some tips. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Cyrus. And we have some questions ready, but uh, let me ask you first, uh, have you also, during your research, have you found out uh, differences between, for example, shorter anchor texts and longer anchor texts, or have you been also um, investigating the length of anchor text and the uh, ranking or, or the, the influence on that? That is an excellent question, and we did not study that, but now I want to because that's really good. Because uh, that would be really interesting. Well, in my own experience, uh, I usually link with longer anchor text because I like to use my I like to use my money keywords, and then I add on a few keywords uh, that you know uh, that don't that aren't relevant and allows me to vary them every time. Looking at our own data though, people generally use uh, shorter anchor text. I think it's a common industry practice. They use shorter anchor text with maybe just one of their money keywords or, or not. Uh, and then they different variations. So I'm not, I don't know how much it matters, but it is an interesting question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, from, from our perspective, shorter anchor texts are better, but uh, I know that the people who are writing content, sometimes they, 
just thinking about their content or their business content, they don't really know all the SEO basics and so on. So sometimes they do like real long links, but yep. maybe that's an observation. Anyway, yeah, it would be a great uh, topic maybe for your next presentation. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Research. All right, all right. So we have some questions. Uh, you can go to slido.com and just enter the event code SEOs and ask more questions. So let's start, for example. I think we uh, answered the first one already. Yep, yep, yep. I think we answered that, although there are many tools, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how many li links should we have to the most important pages internally? Yeah, so this is, there's no, there's no one answer, but in our data set, uh, pages with the most traffic had 25 or more internal links with different variations of anchor text. Okay. And one thing that we didn't really talk about uh, in this presentation is that Google tends to, can punish you if you're over-optimized. And people tend, people can do that a lot. So they they link to their, they link internally with the same anchor text every time. So if you're a small site, if you don't have a lot of authority, sometimes it's good to under-optimize those internal links. So you're using URL anchors or generic anchors, click here every once in a while or something like that. With your larger site, you know, a government site or whatever, you can get away with a lot of over-optimization. But to answer the specific question, you can't, you generally can't have too many. You can go as many as you want with your internal links. And that's what our data shows that the most important pages have a lot of links. Right. And what yeah. about larger websites, maybe e-commerce websites with uh, many links in their navigation, like they have huge uh, mega menus and, yeah. and linking to all their categories and maybe even to like featured yeah. products. What, what about how, how to improve rankings with these? Because they are usually not very eager to get rid of uh, the yeah. navigation links. Yeah, that, and that's true. If you want to, if you want a, a site that does it very, very well, uh, look at IKEA. Do you have IKEA in your part of the world? Yes. Uh, they do it very well. They used to have links all over the place, and they actually pared them down recently so that the navigation is a very funnel navigation. So when you're on the home page, you maybe have like six choices, and then you have to choose one, and then choose another and then choose another as you go down. They don't give you every option on every page and they've done it extremely well. Uh, so I think if you're a very large site, you can get away with lots of links in the navigation. But if you're, if you're an e-commerce store and you don't have a lot of authority in your space, I would very much consider trying to pare that down to just what's necessary and funnel people into your pages as opposed to directing them from every page of your site. Okay, so maybe this related question about the best internal link strategy for pages from faceted filter navigation is similar, that you yeah. recommend to reduce the number of links in the in the filters as well, or 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 maybe do you, okay, maybe you haven't talked about this part, but uh, do you have some preference regarding how faceted navigation works, the filters, so that if they are like more on the JavaScript side or they are actual links or yeah. So this, this, this gets into a, an area that is not quite covered in this presentation, but generally I'm a fan of limiting your, your faucet navigation uh, to just the important things because uh, generally, generally you want to use the, the uncrawlable JavaScript or something like that. Uh, do it, do it in a way that's not going to create, that's going to limit the number of URLs that you have. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of unlimited navigation and, and you just shouldn't do that. But I wanna go back back a second. And I think talking about these e-commerce stores with lots of navigation, I think where people miss out is if you, limit the if you limit the navigation, you have to do a really good job of internal linking in other areas. And that's that's in your product descriptions, your related products, you know, this, you're buying this, please consider these other things, or this pairs well with this collection. And so you have to get those body links. If you're, if you're not gonna link in the navigation, you have to get all those body links and your related products, and you have to really tighten up that game. And that's where, and you can do that even if you have the navigation links, uh, but, and if you have resistance with your clients or whatever, get them to focus at least on those more related product links and in body links. And, and that's, a, that's usually a good way to go. 
Sorry, I've lost where we are now. Okay. And what about what about breadcrumbs? We see them used often. Um, Google, I think, dropped already breadcrumbs, or they haven't from the structured data. I think they still have it. Yeah. But uh, they they probably don't use it that much as, as they used to. But uh, what about breadcrumbs? Do you think that helps too? Yeah, I, I actually do. I'm I'm actually a big fan of breadcrumbs because I think uh, they help give structure to your website. Google can also use the breadcrumbs uh, when forming URLs that appear in SERPs. Uh, a question is, breadcrumbs are kind of like navigation in that they're going to link every time. So you have to have some considerations. If you're linking to your category page in the post, I'd recommend using those hash URLs uh, so that you can get both links. But yeah, overall, I am a huge fan of breadcrumbs. Okay. And another question by Thomas. Uh, what do you think about topic cluster content strategy? Cluster? Oh, yeah. Huge fan. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wasn't prepared to answer questions about that weren't about internal links, but yes, I'm a uh, to topic clusters, huge fan of. So what, I, what we're doing at Zippy is we're doing topic clusters uh, uh, using keyword insights is a great topic clustering tool. There's some other tools out there that are... Uh, uh, really good. But we're, we're using that in our content strategy where we're creating, you know, our top level content and then, then our sub contents. And we're making sure, and we're doing it in a URL structure with breadcrumbs. And we're making sure to link back to the main topic cluster uh, on every post. And it works really well. So uh, the hard part is determining exactly what pages you're going to use in your topic cluster. Uh, but that's where, where I think some of the software comes in uh, and it's, it's fairly affordable and you can, you can come up with, you know, a thousand page uh, content strategy for like 20, 30 US dollars. And it, it, it's, it works pretty well. So yeah, I'm a huge fan. All right. All right. And uh, I think this is an interesting technical question. If you have two links internal or external to the same URL, Yep. And one of them is no follow. Does the other link count as do follow or as no follow? What do you think based on your well, research? You about navigate, yeah. So you have two internal links, same URL page, and one of them is no follow. The the, other, let's, yeah, let's, the say, other, let's say the first one is no follow. Yep. The second one will count as do follow. Okay. okay. But my, yeah, I, my advice is. Unless you, the only reason to use nofollow on a website is on your own website generally is robots control because you don't mm. you 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 don't want your you don't want Google to crawl this page anyway. Uh, but generally, there are better ways to do that. It, it's like if you link to your about page in your navigation, Google isn't going to crawl generally going to crawl your about page one million times a day. They know they're going to crawl it once in a while, and they understand that. Uh, I'd rather have your about page in the footer than than the than the top navigation. But yeah, the the second link will count as follow. I, I'm just not a fan of using no follow anywhere on your website if you can get away with it. Yeah, you mentioned that it doesn't work with the sculpting anymore. Yeah. And okay, so this is another tech, uh, interesting technical question, and this is that if you add the actual anchor uh, to to scroll to some uh, element or to heading yep. and so on. Uh, do you do that or is that the main reason to, to scroll to the specific part of the page or do you use it for other purposes? Yeah, you can do it. You can do it either way. So if you add a linked element on the page uh, and you can look up, you can look up at an anchor element. If you're not, if you're not familiar with what this is, you can use the hash element to get to a specific part of the page. You can do that or you can not do that. And the anchor text variation still works for that page uh, as, as a whole. So uh, you, can do, you can do it either way. I think, I think the, um, the anchors are great for in context when you have a, when you have a, um, a navigation menu on the page, uh, table of contents, I think that's great for the, the scroll too. But sometimes I just, I don't even bother with those scrolling. I just use the hash and I link to the page. Yeah, and, so. and they are also on the client side. So Google doesn't really Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's all it's all good. Either however you want to do it is great. Yeah. So it's more for UX, let's say, right? Yeah. 
And we actually, okay. we actually have some experiments running with this. And I was hoping they were going to be ready for this presentation, but they weren't because Google's taking a while to uh, process the data. But we're experimenting with these exact hash URLs to see what the best way to do them is. Great, great. So I'll just uh, remind everybody to follow you on Twitter <laughs> or through other channels so we can actually see the results. All right. What about footer links? I mean, terms, conditions, cookies. Should, should, should we use nofollow? Shouldn't we use nofollow? I think you mentioned it, it's basically the same navigation. Google doesn't really probably care if it's on the bottom, it's on the top, yeah. it's on the, it's sidewise, so they can recognize yeah. it, right? And other things, I, I actually don't make all those links. Uh, if I can, I'll put them in the footer and then I don't, I don't necessarily put them on every page. Uh, right. If, if uh, you know, terms and conditions, privacy, things like that, I'll make sure they're on my home page and my contact page and things like that, but I do not put them on, on every page of the site. Uh, something like a contact page, I'll put it on the site, but some pages I may not, I may not even link to at all. If they're, I want Google to know they're there, but eh, we'll see. But yeah, uh, I I wouldn't I probably wouldn't use no follow. If you don't if you really don't want Google to follow them, put it in your robots text. But if if you want Google to crawl the page, put it in your footer. They'll figure it out. Unless you unless you see in your logs that Google is hitting that page all the time, I would just put follow on every page. Or or remove some of them. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think the, the the other question is quite similar, but there is another question. I don't know if you have experience with these JavaScript uh, run websites like uh, being based on different frameworks like Angular, I don't know, all the all the other ones. Do you think the, the, the internal linking uh, from the point of Google works the same way? We know that now they are using uh, Chrome for crawling the website, so they should be probably seeing everything as it is for, for common user. Yeah, the, the answer is yes. Uh, these techniques work well in Angular, any, any sort of JavaScript. As long as Google can render the link and they can see the URL, and there are different ways that you can test for this, uh, but Google is very good at crawling JavaScript. But as long as, they, as, long as you're using JavaScript to, to create an A href element with a URL and Google can read all that, these, links, these techniques work fine. And if Google can't render those, you have bigger problems than your internal linking strategy. <laughs> Definitely. So. Okay, so maybe last question. What do you think about internal links in relation to content cannibalization? Um, do you have any tips on how to prevent it? Or I, I, do you have experience that internal links actually cause uh, content cannibalization? I, I actually, I, I am an SEO and different people have different uh, opinions about this but I worry less about content cannibalization than most people. Uh, I, because we had a big problem with this at Moz. We had, you know, we had 15 years of content, all at the same topic every two years. And generally we try to link to those pages. So when you have new content, you wanna make sure to link from your old content to your new content, but not necessarily in reverse. So if you do that, you can kind of help solve your content cannibalization problems by linking to the, your important pages and not necessarily to your unimportant pages. So I think internal links uh, can really help solve a lot of uh, content cannibalization problems. And like, if you want to, if you want a good example, Google, Google canonical tag uh, and see what ranks first. It's probably Moz, but look at all the results you can find on Moz. We have like 20, 30 pages on the canonical tag but they all interlink and Moz has dominated that search for years because of all that content and the internal linking. So great question, thank you. So thank you, I think we can close up. Thank you Cyrus for participating today in another session of SEO Zras. Maybe we'll see you in person because this was actually a live conference before pandemic. So yeah. maybe we'll, we'll see you once in person here in Central Europe. And thanks again for participating. And uh, I was your host, Daniel Durish uh, from Basta Digital. Uh, if you want to uh, see part of uh, this discussion, you can follow us on uh, social networks. We'll post this on YouTube in about a week or two. And we'll have another session maybe in August or July. I'm not so sure, but uh, we'll announce it. Uh, when it comes. So thanks again, Cyrus, and uh, 
have a nice day because for you, actually, day is starting. So. Yeah, this is the first thing. Hey, cheers, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>